Hello, I'm Carl at Trident Fly Fishing. Today we're going to tie the ginger quill dry fly. The ginger quill dry fly has been around for years and it's been attributed to Alfred Ronalds of England back in 1836. It's traditionally a fly for the warmer months and it's typically tied in sizes 12 through 16. Now the recipe for this fly came from the book Flies for Trout by Stuart and Allen. So here's a fly in the vise. So the hook we're putting in the vise today is a TMC 100 BL, that's the barbless version of their standard dry fly hook. And the thread we're going to be using today is a UTC 8 dot in Rusty Dunn. We'll get this tie started about an eye length and a half behind the hook eye. And form a thread base for our wing. And the wings are, in this case, going to be goose quill. You can also use duck quill if you have that available. Um, these are just natural colored gray. And they're typically tied um, about a hook gap in width. And I've made myself up some tools here from various hook sizes. Just cut off the eye and uh, stuck them in a piece of wood. But it gives me a little handle to hold on to and I can separate out some fairly accurate slips quickly. So you need a left and a right wing so that you can get a pair. So once you've got your slips separated from your quills, we're going to put those in shiny side to shiny side, like so. We want these to be a hook shank in length. So we'll measure that out with a pinching wrap. And wrap our thread back. Cut off our excess. Wrap our thread forward to the back of the wing. Pull the wings back, jump our thread forward, form a small thread dam to help stand the wings up. So, and then we just want to separate those wings and if we make some gentle crossing wraps, they'll separate nicely for us. Like that. Next, we're going to tie in our tail. That's going to be from a hairline half cape in the color ginger. So we'll select a feather from down at the base, uh, like this one that I've already pulled out. And we'll pull some of these barbules out 90 degrees to the stem to even out the tips, tear those off. Measure these out to be a hook shank in length. Tie those in on top, right above where the barb would have been. That looks pretty good. Cut off our excess here.
neaten that up a little bit so we get a bit of a gradual taper. And the body of this fly is going to be made from some stripped peacock hurl. This material can dry out on you and be real prone to breaking. Sometimes I've had to soak this in water before I've been able to use it. And we'll tie these in right at the base of the tail and then wrap our thread forward to the wing. Get our trusty hackle pliers out. broke on me. Cracked. These can be dry. Sometimes you have to soak these quills in water to soften them up so that they won't do that. Try that again. And once we reach our wing, we're going to tie that off. Our excess. And our hackle for this fly is going to come from that same cape sized to the hook, which is a 14. Cut off all of the bad stuff and snip off some barbules on either side of the stem to create a tie in point. Tie this in behind our wing. Bring our thread forward to the hook eye, like so. And now we'll take some wraps behind the wing. And now in front of the wing, pull the wing back. Reach the eye, we'll tie that off. Reposition that just a little. Cut off our excess. Pull this back and form a small head. Take our whip finish tool, four or five turn whip finish. Seat our knot, cut our thread. Now a little head cement. This is Loon's water based. Get rid of that excess with a little flick here. It'll clear the eye right out. And there we have our completed fly. Feel free to leave comments at the bottom of the page. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to see all the new content here at Trident Fly Fishing. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time.